nigga nice. That nigga mean. Switch it up. That nigga rock. That nigga green. What's up, everybody? Um. I want to start by saying happy Valentine's Day if I post this on Thursday. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. But uh I'm going to have I'm going to I'm making this video on the situation we have going on with Mark Ingram because for some reason a lot of people are convinced that we're not going to make a run at re-signing him which is uh crazy to think because we've literally had him since he was drafted in 2011. So the fact that you people think that we're not going to make a run at him is kind of crazy. But um yeah, this is going to be me breaking down why the Saints need to re-sign Mark Ingram to be as good as they have been in the past year. So, let's get into it. The past couple of years, and I'm talking about 2017, uh, the last season, the last season before that, we have had an extremely potent dual threat offense. That has been thanked with uh, the, the appearance of Alvin Kamara and the uh, explosiveness of Mark Ingram. Um, they have become quite the dynamic duo, which most have been saying is league's best. Um, there were murmurs about, you know, Todd Gurley and CJ Anderson, but that was only towards the end of the season. So we haven't, we didn't see much of that at all. It was mainly just Ingram and Kamara for the past two years. So, yeah. Because of two dynamic running backs, Drew Brees has not been tasked with throwing the ball as much as he used to in years past. He went from throwing 5,000 yards and 40 touchdowns every year to being conservative and throwing 30 touchdowns and 3,000 to 4,500 yards. And most of those 30 touchdowns are really just, you know, throw short passes in the red zone to either his running backs, tight ends, or occasionally the wide receiver here and there with Mike Thomas and, and you know, company. But Mark Ingram has helped this offense so much, okay? There are things that Alvin Kamara just cannot do. And um, one of those things he cannot do too well is running in between the tackles. And I know most of you are probably throwing up in your mouths right now. But when you look at film of Alvin Kamara, most of his plays are, you know, pitch plays, toss plays, things like that, screens. You don't see Alvin Kamara as a b between the tackles splitting the defensive line running back. Um, he's used more as an explosive, you know, big play kind of guy, while Mark Ingram is used to pick up third downs and short yarded situations and things like that. He has really good breakaway speed, so when he gets to the second level, he has a you know a tendency to accelerate and take plays deeper and deeper into the field. So. You got to think, man, if our offense has been running this perfectly, this balanced with a dual threat running back situation in Drew Brees, why would we want to break that up? I don't think that our offense is good enough to function as well as it has been with the, uh, you know, the loss of Mark Ingram. And um, he loves the New Orleans Saints. He loves the team. He, I don't, he, he said he'd take a pay cut to stay on the roster. I just don't I don't see us parting ways with him this this offseason and if we do that'll be a real real big shame. In 2016 and 2017 Mark Ingram had two consecutive 1000-yard seasons and um in uh 2016 he had six touchdowns and in 2017 he had 12 touchdowns. 2017 was really his big breakout year where he had 1100 yards and 12 touchdowns, 4.9 yard per carry. And in 2018, he only had 645 yards and six touchdowns because he started the year with a suspension uh, for PEDs and never really got right on the right footing because we had an offensive flow going into the you know the other half of the season. So he's a very unselfish football player, is what I'm getting at. He only got the ball in you know short yardage opportunities last season, and he was still very content with the with the the snaps he was getting you know receiving if if that makes any sense he he's been he was content with what he was receiving even though it was a lot smaller than the workload he carried in weeks in years past because he knew what happened he knew what he did and he knew that because there was a flow in the offense things didn't want to get messed up and we didn't want to move you know people places and screw everything up so Mark Ingram is a very, 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 very unselfish football player, and I will not be surprised if he takes a pay cut to stay on the team. 
Another thing that we have to take into consideration is how big of a locker room presence Mark Ingram actually is. Hold on, let me turn on my Xbox. You see the videos, the Snapchats, the Instagram lives of them dancing, having fun, you know, all that good stuff. Mark Ingram's always a centerpiece of to that. And you guys understand how important locker room glue is, right? If your players don't get along in the locker room, chances are they're not going to function right as a team. We've seen teams get a bunch of good players, have leader conflicts, and then fall down the drain. This team is a team that has to have role models. The whole New Orleans Saints mojo the last two seasons has been based solely off of chemistry. The chemistry on this team has been downright flawless, and I'm telling you, Mark Ingram has been one of the biggest reasons that our chemistry has been flowing so well because he's just an all-around fun guy to be around like you know if you look at the 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 snapchats and instagram instagram lives all that stuff it seems like he really brings the best out of everybody around him he's a happy-go-lucky guy and i along with skill chemistry and locker room presence is so important it cannot be overlooked especially you know with a centerpiece player one of the best biggest roles on the offense if you have a guy that will go out, give you 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns, and then go into the locker room and tutor and mentor everybody else and be just that, you know, charismatic, you know, glowing personality that the locker room needs, don't get rid of him. I don't care if he wants every single penny we have in free agency, do not let go of Mark. We have had him since he was drafted in 2011. It would just be a mistake. To ruin the chemistry we have going, the um the, the the massive amount of success that Alvin Kamara has had was extremely influenced and brought together by Mark Ingram, the mentor, the leadership, just the all around helping that Mark Ingram has you know given Alvin Kamara the tips, the tricks, the veteran view on everything. We need. Our second guy to that running back core, you know, he's the number one running. I, I don't want Alvin Kamara to be our number one every down running back because that is how players get figured out. And that is how players' careers die. We need Mark. He is strong. They're not stopping him. There, there's, there's no game plan for someone that's just stronger than you. He's going to push you down and keep running. You can't game plan for that. Mark is a once in a generation, yes, once in a generation running back, and he proved that for breaking all of the previous historic records for the New Orleans Saints running back position. We cannot just get rid of him because we have this new little agile Alvin Kamara guy in town. I understand how good he is because Alvin Kamara is an amazing football player. He, like I said, once in a generation, but we can't break the bonds we have on this team. It has been one of the biggest reasons for our success, and if we break... If we break the bonds, it'll be one of our biggest reasons for our downfall. We need to keep everything we have together. Uh, Mark Ingram was talking about how much he wanted to be back on the team. Third time's a charm. All that good stuff, guys. I'm telling you. If we get rid of Mark, it won't be the same. Um, I just... He's been so good. He's been consistently good since he was drafted. He has been 700 to 1,000 yards every year. And he really started picking it up before he got um before he got suspended, guys. I just I don't know. I I can't I don't feel right getting rid of Mark Ingram. And uh, you know. That's just that's just all I gotta say. Um re sign him. He's gonna take a pay cut. He's not gonna be more than about eight you can re sign him for two years, probably eight million dollars. Because um his contract was four years, sixteen million dollars, so I'm assuming he wouldn't mind taking another $4 million a year. He was really underpaid for the skill we got from him. Mark Ingram is an amazing football player, and I just love him. I c- it is going to hurt so bad if Mark goes to another team. I, can't, I won't be able to deal with it. Like That is one of my favorite players on this football team. He has seriously been the glue holding this team together. Drew Brees has always been there also. But good God, man. Mark has been there. 
He's he's 30 years old. We can't get rid of him now. Let him finish his career as a New Orleans Saint. He's not going to be playing for more than four more years. Just give my man a let, one more contract. Let him play his time out with us. Yes, I know this video was just me talking about how good of a guy Mark Ingram is and how much I like him instead of his football playing abilities, even though we all know he's a good 1,000-yard capable, 10-touchdown-plus capable running back that will split your defensive line, go straight from the tackles all the way to the third level type of running back. But y'all just got to you gotta understand how much we have to appreciate this guy. But yeah. Um, how do I feel about Mark Ingram? We need, we need, we need to re-sign him. Stat. I mean, we got, with free agency, our first goal on the checklist, re-sign Mark. Seriously, because he's at, he's just as important as Eddie, but losing Drew Brees would be debatably as, okay, no, because we have Alvin Kamara, a replacement. Just forget I said that. If we had, like, somebody under Drew that could, like, actually carry a load, It'd be different. I have a headache. Uh, school. I have school tomorrow. Good thing I'm recording this at 8.30 p.m. instead of 12.30 in the morning. So, if you guys enjoyed watching the video, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. I've been posting videos a lot lately. Uh, probably once or two, one, at least once a week. Twice a week on a, on a good week. So, yeah. Uh... Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any more suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. I go through all of those, read all of those, respond to all of those. Let me talk about something real quick. I don't know if any of y'all are watching to the end of this video because it's been 12 minutes already. But there really have been people calling me out because my intro song says the N-word. Are we really, it's 2019, and I can't use a song written and performed by a black dude that says the N-word as my introduction? I, I don't, the introduction's fire. I, I don't give a, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if it says the N-word. It's fire. It's a bit vulgar, but, Yeah. I just dragged this video on for an extra minute for no reason. Thank you guys for watching. See y'all in the next one. Hope y'all enjoyed. Have a good Valentine's Day, whatever day it is. Whenever I post this, it might be Friday, it might be Thursday. I don't know. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day. And yeah, see you guys on the next one. Like I said, comment below. Uh, what's it called? What are I? Uh, suggestions. Comment suggestions below. Goodbye.